As we continue our look at how to troubleshoot a Cisco Catalyst switch, let's take a look at one of the most powerful tools that we have in our toolbox. It is the Show Interfaces command. Generally, will specify an interface after this command. I could press enter right now and it would give me detailed information about the current status of every single interface and that takes a while. So normally we'll want to focus our efforts and say show me information about this specific interface. On SW1 the interface that's being used to trunk up to SW2 is interface faced Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2. Let's take a look at that interface. What I want to draw your attention to right now is the interface status. It's this first line of the output. It says that this interface is up and it also says the line protocol is up and it tells us that that means connected. This first part, the interface status that is currently up, that refers to layer one of the OSI model. This is talking about the hardware. This can let us know whether or not we are receiving a carrier detect signal from the far end of this link. Let's move up to layer two and take a look at the line protocol. We can think of this as the data link layer status. And this lets us know if keep alives are being received at the data link layer. When an interface is up and operational, we refer to it as being in the up, up state. But we could have other combinations. Maybe we're up, down, maybe we're down, down, maybe we're administratively down. Let's take a look at some of the different options we have. When we're interpreting output from the show interfaces command, remember we're looking at layer one and layer two status, and that's going to give us information about the link status. In the example we just saw, we were up at layer one, we were up at layer two. That indicated to us that our link status was functional. What if we were up down though? Up down means that we're up and happy at layer one, but we're not at layer two. In other words, layer two keep alives are not being received. We've got some sort of a connection issue. If we're down, down, and that second down, the layer two down, in parentheses says not connect, that's telling us that something's not plugged in. Maybe our side of the cable, the cable plugged into our switch is not plugged in. Or maybe the far end of the cable is not plugged into the far end switch. Or maybe the switches are connected physically, but the far end switch has that port at the far end of this link, that port is administratively shut down on the other switch. That's a possibility. If we're down down, then that means that we're not happy at layer one. We've got some sort of a layer one hardware, an interface issue. We could administratively shut down a switch port. For security purposes, that might be a good thing to do. So somebody doesn't just find an open switch port and connect into it. And we're not done taking a look at the show interfaces command. In our next video, we'll take a look at how we can interpret some of the statistical information seen in this command. But in this video, let's take a look at one other command. It's the show interface status command. Let's go back out to the live interface to check it out. Let's take a look at the output of show interfaces status. This is going to give us some very important information. Not only does it tell us whether or not a port is connected or not. You see here's our trunk port going up to switch SW2. It's connected. We see that it's a trunk. If it's not a trunk, if it's an access port, we can see if that port is a member of a specific VLAN. We can see that this port is a member of VLAN 1, for example. But one of the main things I wanted to show you in this output, one of the main things I'll use this command for, is it tells us the duplex and speed settings. This is a major reason why we might have connectivity issues between our switches. The duplexes and the speeds are not matching up on both sides of the link. What are we running here? The A tells me that I auto-negotiated the setting. In other words, I did not statically hard code that we're running in full duplex. I did not statically say that we're running at 100 megabits per second. The A's tell me that these were auto-negotiated. And auto-negotiation can let us down sometimes. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let's go over to switch SW2. Let's check out its interface status. We'll do a show interface status on SW2 and the far end of the trunk link it's coming in to gigabit 0 slash 10. Notice that the duplex is set to auto and full and the speed is set to 100. Let me show you a really common issue that is not that intuitive. I don't think it's that intuitive why this would happen but it sure can happen. If we have one side of a link set to full duplex and the other side of the link is set to auto duplex, I think it's reasonable to assume that 
Well, one side is set to full, the other side is set to auto. The auto side will simply see that the other side is full duplex and it will become full. That's what auto is all about, isn't it? Negotiating with the far end. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. If we're set to full duplex on our Cisco Catalyst switch, we are not going to be participating in auto negotiation. Let's prove it. Let's on switch SW2, let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 10 and instead of setting it to auto duplex, I'm going to hard code it to full. Let's say duplex full. By saying that, I'm saying that that port is not going to be participating in the negotiation of duplex. Let's go to the other side and see what's going on. Notice that we're getting a duplex mismatch error right now. It says the far side is set to half duplex. We hard coded ourselves to full. Why would the other side do half duplex? Let's go check it out. We're getting an error message here on screen. If we do a show interface status, we can see that even though we told this side to auto negotiate duplex and we hard coded the other side, auto negotiation just failed. Here's what happened. We set SW1, this switch, to auto negotiate. We hard coded the other switch to full duplex. Full duplex does not participate in auto negotiation. And what happened when this switch tried to auto negotiate with the far end? Since the other end was not participating, this switch defaulted to half duplex. We now have a duplex mismatch. And with the duplex mismatch, traffic still gets through somewhat, but it can significantly degrade performance. You might not even notice that you have an issue for a little while, and then your users start complaining that things are really slow. It's taking 30 minutes to transfer a file. It should take one minute. My printer is working really, really slow. Those conditions could be indicative of a duplex mismatch. You can quickly check your duplex status, again, by simply saying, show interfaces status. And you definitely want to stay away from setting one side of a link to full duplex and the other side to auto duplex.